you'll need an instrument known as a scintillation counter connected to a multi-channel analyzer. It may look complicated, but the principle on which it works is easy to understand. Its probe detects only gamma radiation. At the bottom is a thin metal shield which gammas can easily penetrate. Inside is a crystal that reacts in a peculiar way when it absorbs gammas. This is not the crystal. It's a circle of tissue paper that represents the crystal. The projector will be the source of gammas. The light represents the gamma radiation. When gammas are absorbed by the crystal, some of the energy is converted to light. Not a steady beam like this, but short flashes of light, more like this. Scintillation means flashing in Latin. The light produced is picked up by a special photocell that converts some of the light energy to an electric current. In this model, the light sensing cell is similar to that in a photographic exposure meter. In the actual scintillation counter, it's a photomultiplier. The current generated by the photocell makes the needle of the meter move. Notice there's a pulse of current for every flash of light produced by the gammas. If you turn up the brightness of the projector to represent gammas of higher energy, the flashes of light they produce are brighter. The higher energy generates a stronger current. Each pulse of current is in direct proportion to the energy of each gamma. Now let each burst of current be represented by one of the red balls in the trough. Inside the scintillation counter is a memory. That's what those channels on the lower right are supposed to be. The value of a given pulse of current is stored in the appropriate channel. The energy of each gamma determines where the information is filed. As more and more gamma energies are measured, the data in the memory begins to show a pattern. Scanning the channels now shows that most of the gamma energies had a value of 8 in this model. Of course, there are no balls inside a real scintillation counter. It's a highly sophisticated electronic device for detecting, measuring, storing, and displaying gamma energy patterns. Now that you know how it operates, you're ready to use it to measure the energy of the gammas from cobalt-60. The instrument is all set. The gammas are penetrating the crystal, generating flashes of light that are picked up by the photomultiplier. Each burst of current is being measured and then displayed as a tiny dot of light on that round screen. The dots that represent the gammas of the same energy are added together like the balls in the slots. Gradually, the pattern formed by the cobalt-60 gammas develops. Here's a photographic record of the cobalt-60 gamma energies. What do you suppose the curve for uranium will look like? You'll soon see for yourself. Uranium gammas are creating flashes of light which are changed to bursts of electric current that will eventually show up on the screen. The gamma radiation from uranium produced this pattern. Here's the photograph of uranium gamma energies. Note how different the pattern is from that of cobalt-60. Now to check the gamma radiation from radium. This is the photograph of the radium gamma energies. Compare it to the others. 